today I have a great story to share with you today this book is called the last stop on Market Street it's by Matt de la Pena and it's published by Penguin and Scholastic this is a great story about a little boy and his grandmother and a journey they take together I hope you guys will enjoy it the last stop on Market Street CJ pushed through the church doors skipped down the steps the outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. It smells like rain here today, too. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire. An old Mr. Dennis who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the doors swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. I love that, them getting on the bus. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here after church? CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact, their noses too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. You can see there on the phone. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real life thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, a rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus and out of the big city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street. Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. 
How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you are a better witness for what is beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful, where, where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamps still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now, come on. I love it. You can see him over here in line, working at the soup kitchen, helping their neighbors. And then the last page with our information about our text is just them at the bus stop. I love this story. I think this is a beautiful story. And I love the relationship that CJ has with his grandma. All right, hang tight for some activities you can do with our read aloud today. All right, friends, I have two different activities you can do with the last stop on Market Street today. The first one is a writing activity. So they're going on this journey together. They're traveling to a soup kitchen. And at first, CJ really doesn't want to go. It, it sounds like something they do regularly, but he, he's more interested in what everyone else is doing. I want you to write for me about a time when you definitely didn't want to do something, but then you realized it wasn't that bad after all. You might have even enjoyed what you ended up doing. So I want you to write for me today. The next task I want you to do today, it's actually an art project. So throughout the text, the art is just stunning. It's illustrated by Christian Robinson and the artwork is just beautiful. And something I love are these last pages as they're walking to the soup kitchen, with the bright colors and the city in the background. And something I think is really fun here, you can actually see him and his grandmother are tiny, tiny pieces of paper. So I want you guys today to use what you can find around your house. Use your art supplies, use construction paper, use newspaper, use magazine clippings, whatever you can find. I want you to make a collage of a cityscape. Buildings and windows and houses and I really want to see your creativity come through today. I want you to get really creative for me. And I want you to be inspired by Last Stop on Market Street. All right, happy reading, happy creating.